Now, before we jump into this one, I want to give my thanks to Manscaped for this holiday season. Now, everyone loves a bit of turkey and stuffing over Christmas, but you're going to be looking like a dessert, okay, with the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. What better topic to talk with the in-laws about than what your balls are looking like, okay? And you can get the ultimate men's hygiene bundle uh, on manscaped.com, and you can use the code LASTLAP on the screen for 20% off. Now, let's be totally honest, lads. One of the most daunting things about trimming downstairs are the cuts and nicks that you're gonna end up getting. With this hygiene bundle, you can make sure your plums are looking as smooth as they need to be. Now just listen to this, listen to all of the things you're gonna be getting in this bundle. A lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the weed whacker and nose hair trimmer, because we all know they can get into a bit of a state sometimes as well. We've got your crop preserver ball deodorant to make sure everything's smelling kind of fresh. Crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs and a travel bag to hold all of your goodies as well. Now the lawnmower 4.0 has a cutting edge, if you'll excuse the pun, ceramic blade uh, that makes sure there's no cuts and nicks and it's even waterproof as well, just in case you get into some sort of other incident whilst you're shaving. The Weed Whacker for your nose and ears has a 360 degree device that makes it really, really easy to get those pesky nose and ear hairs out. As I mentioned at the start, you can get 20% off products at manscaped.com using the code LASTLAP, okay? It's on the screen. That's 20% off and free shipping as well. You be thankful for manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you too. Now let's get back into the podcast. Podcast. All right, you lot, don't forget to give us a follow on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And while you're at it, give us a five star rating. Trust me, it really does help us out. So I'd gone to Miami, you know, so excited for the first race. There was nice. huge interest for me, ESPN, obviously, second US race. Yeah. yeah. And ESPN's really mm. bought into F1 in the last few years. Not that they hadn't before, but you can see as a company, obviously, we've got a th new three year deal now in, in America. Yeah. And so I was buzzing going there. Yeah. Get there, first day, it's like Lewis has to take all his jewelry out because, you know, <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. I was like, oh my God. Like, oh, yeah. And people were, <laughs> people, were that, come on. people were messaging me, like, from in the company, the colleagues I know in different departments, and were like, what's this about? I was like, mate, I can't even, I'm putting a, we're putting a piece together to try and explain it. But, <laughs> but like, and they're like he's got a nose stud and it's like yeah yeah and that's and and uh, he's got to take it out you know and, and obviously I, I think that race i've kind of lost track of that even how that went down but i think it was a few races later that there was kind of a conclusion to that wasn't yes there? yeah um, yeah it was an ongoing story, was it up to silverstone i think was like the dead yeah and like we were like we're this, yeah, this, this great new race we're in miami mm -hmm. you know and we're talking about driver jewelry and stuff and it was all down mm -hmm. to you know the fia really over kind of policing yeah. their own rules yeah and some, sometimes rules should be police, but something like that, you're like, look, you know, it, it, it just looks so bad from the outside. And yeah. like you say, you're writing about that and you're like, we want to be writing about how great Miami is or, yeah. yes. or, 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 or not. You know, some of the drivers, some of the drivers said, oh, the track's not that great. You know, you want to give it an honest take, but you're actually like, well, I'll write that, but I've got to write 500 <laughs> words on, on this jewelry thing before I get <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get back to you on the raid. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought as an F1 journalist, I'd ever write about, you know, no stuff yeah, as, yeah. as mm. I did in like May time this year. Mm. <laughs> and, and I guess, you know, with, 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 you know, you mentioned Miami, Las Vegas as well next year. you got Austin. I mean, it's a big deal for sort of Formula One in America, especially especially for a company like ESPN. This must be like a great, yeah. great time for you guys. And I'm sure the growth of, of Formula One is growing. And like, how, how did they make it happen over there? Like, how have they managed to reach the States if you, if you can even explain it? But it, yeah, it must be like a great time as well as how, how did that even come about? How did that marriage sort of come about that we've been waiting for a long time? We have. And honestly, it, it, it's been night and day since I started at ESPN to now, the interest in America, but in kind of ESPN kind of globally as a company yeah. Um, because even, so we got the TV deal, I want to say 2018 was the first year we had the deal mm -hmm. in America mm -hmm. and um, you know, the, the, the ratings were decent <clears throat> and um, you know, it, it had a ground, motor, motor racing has always had, you know, a core groundswell of support over there. Sure. Yeah. But you could tell it wasn't, it wasn't exploding. And I think that one of the things that happened, obviously Netflix was incredible for Formula One, what it did just open the access up for people. And actually I think two things happened that were, what, what, you know, what, I'm not saying these were great events, but the, the, the pandemic in terms of what it did for Formula One was it meant people were at home for a long time yeah. and most people had access to Netflix and suddenly there's this ready-made, I think by then there was three seasons out of yeah. that, people could yeah. sit down and watch it. <clears throat> and then Formula One was one of the first championships actually to come back and race. Yeah. So people could, and, and it being on, on ESPN, you know, lots of people could watch it in America. Even as a sport, it was probably the first, like one of the first global ones to come yeah. back. I, I think it, yeah, I yeah. think it was. I think football had maybe done, <clears throat> had maybe done the Champions League final 
by yeah. then. Yeah, just about. Had yeah. just about yeah. done it because it was the first weekend of, Ju uh, of July that year of 2020. Right. Yeah. So I can't remember the ex exact timing. It was Austria, wasn't it? The first Austria, there was two first races back. back, yeah. back yeah. Austria, yeah. Austria, and Styrian as well, wasn't it? And I remember, Styrian. <laughs> that's, that's it, Austrian Styria, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which in itself, I remember explaining that and I was like, just call it the Austrian 2 or something. Like, like, <laughs> it's fine. The return. <laughs> the return of Austria, yeah. Um, but um, that gave, I think, a lot of people who had suddenly thought, oh, this sport's fantastic. Like, I really... Um, connecting with these drivers, they could suddenly watch it. And um, that's the, I think I, I always joke to people, there's three things everybody watched during Netflix. It was Last Dance, Tiger King, and Drive to Survive. Yeah. Oh, and everybody Tiger, watched it. That's a huge, yeah. And, and, and they all became huge talking points. And then in America, especially, I think one of the, one of the big issues was there wasn't that visibility of, of drivers. People maybe knew who Lewis Hamilton was. I mean, I can remember going to Austin in 2017, first time I went to the US Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. And even people in Austin would be like, what are you here for? And then you say on Formula One, they're like, oh yeah, is that, that's Lewis Hamilton, right? And you're like, yeah, yeah. And like, oh, okay, I don't really know much about it. Mm. Now, you can't find anybody who yeah. doesn't know about it. Yeah. I mean, you get, you get into an Uber and they're talking about Formula One. You go to yeah. a bar and they're like, you're here for the Formula you're One. Here for Formula one tell yeah. me. And they'll be like, tell me about Yuki Tsunoda or, or Nicholas Latifi. And I'm like, <laughs> no, and no, no yeah. disrespect that's to those guys, but like, yeah. those are guys that are way down the order. Yeah, and yeah. years ago, you'd be lucky if people knew like the top guy or the top two guys. Sure. Now people are like, oh, I love, I, Yuki's my favorite guy or Pierre's my favorite guy. Or, and I think that that's the great thing that Drive to Survive did is it, it's given visibility to all these drivers. And um, in America especially, it just really, I think it really connected with that demographic. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of those guys have been really smart about it. I mean, Daniel Ricciardo is a huge star over there now. Yeah. I think Lewis, I mean, Lewis is, Lewis is just a global superstar. Yeah. You know, he now owns part of the Denver Broncos. You know, yeah. he's, he's, he's a name out there that people know. So it's kind of been organic, but yeah, from, from 20, kind of 2020 onwards to now, it's in America, it's just felt like it's been like that. And sure. if you'd said to me like three, three, four years ago, we'd have three races in America and that one of them would be Vegas and it'd be down the strip there. Mm. I'd have laughed at you and just yeah, yeah. saying that's never going to happen. <laughs> and they've made it happen because there's interest there and people, you know, Vegas wants to spend that kind of money to put the race on. Miami wants it. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are businessmen in America mm. right now, business people in America right now who um, would want to put a fourth race on. You know, there's talk of New York and stuff like that, yeah. which is nuts <clears throat> but not, and, and, and good kind of nuts because mm, we're mm. in a position where the interest is what it is. But um, yeah, it's, mm. it, it's kind of taken us by surprise a little bit um, but good surprise. Where yeah, you're like, obviously, Cota, like, you've been running there for 10 years now. It was 10 yeah. Grand Prix, wasn't it? Yeah. It was, yeah. This year. It was. So obviously, there was, there was, quite, there was decent interest in, in... It was always there to a degree, but you, even going there, you, you, I mean, you, you were there this year, yeah, right? literally, and, and the, yeah, buzz yeah. Around, the buzz around it was unbelievable. It was interesting, yeah, because when you were talking about, yeah, in an Uber in a bar, literally the first things the guy in the Uber said to me was like, oh, you're here, are you here for a Formula 1? I was going to do an American accent. Yeah. <laughs> I was Definitely well. not worth doing. <laughs> I was as well, and I thought, it's not, yeah, it's not worth doing. <laughs> No. It's not, yeah. And the, 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 the first thing the guy in the Uber said was like, oh, you're here for Formula One. Or you're here for the, because there was a the football as well. It was like, well, the soccer. That's right. And Austin they, and they just had well. Austin City Limits as well, which is the big music festival. Yeah, oh, festival okay. there as well. But even then, like the guy was just like, yeah, you're here for Formula One. Like the guy in the bar was yeah. like, yeah, hope you enjoy the Formula One. They've got like some retro vintage 1978 yeah. F1 footage on in the yeah. background on the TV. I'm like, wow, this is, yeah. they've seriously embraced it there. Yeah. And um, I mean, I could never imagine an F1 car going through a casino like the other day. You know, I don't know if you saw that clip of it going straight. Well, yeah. this is the thing. And yeah. I was, I was I like, mean, I hope they told the patrons in there that that was happening. <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have totally been the guy that walked out in front of it like an idiot. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's been stuff like that that's just, that's just unbelievable. Um, and yeah, I mean, Austin, it's helped as well. There's, you know, there's a lot of fans from Mexico that come up for Sergio, and mm -hmm. I think that's, yeah. I think that's doubled as yeah, well. I think. Yeah. well. Yeah, you definitely can't overlook that. You know, there's some incredible fans in Mexico there. Um, and yeah, actually, I've got to give credit to Cota. Actually, you, you mentioned about the the growth, uh -huh. but having that race there and having it established, I think, was massive. Because mm -hmm. yeah. if it meant that that first season when people come into Formula One, there was a race on US time. For them. You know, it was it was yeah. it was in that it was American and, and yeah. it was very American. You know, Coach has always been great at like leaning into being the US Grand Prix. Yeah. And um, if they hadn't had that there, I'm not saying it would have put people off, but it just it hooked so many people in. I mean, it was one of yeah. the most watched races <clears throat> in ESPN history. Um, great time zone. Broke people love record this year as well. That's they? right. They did. They did. Is so that four hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, it ridiculous. Was ridiculous oh, it yeah. was. It was. Mad. I've never seen so many so many people in one place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I was like, are they, all these people staying in Austin? How many hotels are there? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. 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 I, you know, I'd even argue that as well. ESPN definitely being a catalyst. Because I remember when they came up, you know, like ESPN F one. Like I remember that coming up on like Twitter and stuff. And I was like, huh. So they're getting involved in this because I I, I, yeah. I I watch ESPN quite religiously for like first take and other kind of sports and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I love first take oh, i love, love that stuff. stuff um and so when i sort of see 
ESPN and Formula One kind of have that because I look at Formula One as a European type of thing. Mm -hmm. So when I see America sort of embracing it and taking it on, and especially because do you remember Indianapolis? So we've had we've right. had a bad experience with America before. Not not America's fault, but you know when you think of American Grand Prix, you sort of that one kind of sticks out into your mind. You know, is it two thousand and five the Indianapolis Grand Prix? Yeah, it's almost like a like not a stigma, but just like a yeah a thing to erase. And just it's like, one of the most controversial. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the most controversial races of all time. Yeah, and then Cota sort of came, and I always felt like. Like at the beginning, because I think even Austin as a city um, has grown tremendously. It's now become like kind of the hipster place to go. And it yeah. seems like it's overcrowded now. Uh, and people who are originally from Austin, I think, <laughs> get the hell out of there yeah. kind of thing. But <clears throat> I remember sort of thinking, Austin, I was thinking, why have they gone there? But then they've just bide their time. And look at us now, 10 years later, we've got free races in America. We've got ESPN covering Formula One, which is huge. I think, I think you know, you guys got to credit yourselves as well for, for jumping on board with that. So yeah, yeah. it's been I, awesome. Yeah, I think, I think it has been important that ESPN's got Got it. You know, and I think that it's always it's always difficult when you're talking about broadcasts because, you know, I don't know the inner workings of previous deals that other companies have had. Yeah. But I think being able to put because a lot of the big races go on to ABC in America, which just mm. opens up the target, sh the target audience, the yeah. target share. So the audience share massively. Mm. Yeah. Um, and little things like that. I mean, you know, people always say that the glory days in, in of F1 in the UK was when it was free to wear. Yeah. And when it was open to the most amount of people it could. Um, yeah. You know, it's been different to that. But in terms of the amount of people it can reach has been massive. Mm -hmm. um, something that's been that's been good as well. But yeah, you're right. I mean, Indianapolis 2005. I didn't think F1 would properly ever. Really yeah, it would have been at the time. It just seemed like okay. Well, <clears throat> let's just let's just never go back there again. Like we've, yeah. we've ruined it. So um, yeah, it's it's nuts to think that was only I mean less than 20 years ago. Yeah. And complete 180 since then. And instead of that drama, we have Las Vegas. Yes. What did you make of? You spoke about it briefly. What did you make of the launch? You know, obviously Lewis Hamilton with neon lights doing oh. donuts. And <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? How a, a tiny little change like that can look so cool. Yeah, I yes. remember when when they when they for oh, yeah. night races we need that. Yeah, every single time. you see it and you're like, that's great. It's like when they put the sparks back on the cars again. Yeah, thousands. And, um, yeah, yeah. and it little things like that. You know, Formula One should be cool. You know, that's why sometimes when you get into the weeds of these criticisms about drivers, it can be frustrating because I'm always like, ultimately Formula One should be unbelievable. It should be fun. Yeah. And you should be constantly in awe of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I think as a as a spectacle, I think Vegas is going to be on a different level. I can't even imagine it. I think um, to have pulled that off is really a credit to to F one to have got that that race done. In terms of the quality of the race, who knows? We'll yeah. have to see. You know, the circuit doesn't look incredible from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. But I think that in the early years, certainly the first year and then the second year, you know, it does fade off a bit after mm -hmm. a while. Mm -hmm. But I think that the the focus is going to be on. The spectacle of the race you know how how big it is how many people yeah. are there you know the glitz and the glamour of it and yeah. and kind of you know it would be interesting to see how they how they continue that over time but in terms of that launch event like you you can see the interest there it wasn't like they were doing it down the strip and everyone was like what's this what's going yeah, on yeah, yeah. there's loads of people there yeah. uh generated great buzz and again going back to espn you know it, it got <coughs> big coverage on espn and, and news channels yeah. were picking it up yeah, yeah. which a few years ago even i remember um espn sorry uh, sorry formula one did some stuff uh, in Chicago, I think, and the, the coverage in America was fairly minimal. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, it wasn't a massive event, but it was big enough that over here it would have got covered. Yeah, but there it didn't. So again, that shows you how the mm -hmm. things have changed. Um, but it looks great. I mean, I can't imagine. I'm, I'm hoping to go there next year, and yeah. I mean, everything. The prices of everything look insane. <laughs> so I'm not sure how that's going to work. <coughs> yeah, for fans. I hope that fa you know some some ordinary fans can get out there. Yeah, I hope it's affordable. Yeah, tickets. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. at the moment it looks it looks like that's not the case, but. Um, you know, hopefully F1 can work on that. But yeah, it, I think it will be, I just hope the championships are going then because that'll be the third to the end of the season, won't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be a shame if they got there and it's like, we already know who the champion is. Yeah, that's it true. It feels like it deserves like a, a consequential race on that Sunday. No, oh, sorry, on that Saturday night. Yeah. That's the other thing I'm, I, I think is going to be kind of cool is Saturday, Saturday night. night. Yeah. Uh, wow. That vibe <laughs> of it. It's going to be mad. Um, <laughs> of course, which I think is the first one since, since the early 90s that's been on a Saturday. So yeah, that, yeah. that in itself is going to just throw everything. Everything's going to feel different. That <laughs> yeah, way. yeah, no, a thousand. We'll no, go out no, on a night out. Just like, oh my God, I need to keep all the, the, the races <laughs> happening. Wait, over here, I think with the way it works out, it won't be too bad. It'll be an early morning. Oh, will it? Oh yeah, of course. Because, because, because it oh, nice. it's existing. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and so it'll actually, weirdly, for, if you're on the East Coast of America, it's a really, it's actually not the, the best time. Mm -hmm. But because they're trying to, because obviously they wanted the race to be on a Sunday in Europe. If it's Sunday afternoon in Vegas, you're talking Monday morning kind of time. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that should be interesting as well to watch a race when it's going to be early morning here yeah. and people watching it are going to be like, it's dark there. It's just the sun's just <laughs> Yeah, what's here. going like, on? Going They're on. raving. I, They're, yeah. I'm should I be? Should I yeah. be raving still? Should I still be out? <laughs> yeah, you sat there with a kebab watching the race. Like, this feels yeah. weird. 